curator and operator of e4training.com. Gary is across the pond, so to speak, in the United Kingdom. Um, has spent a great deal of time working in the hydraulics um, training and education industry. And as you'll see, is extremely skilled in developing online and web-based uh, learning resources. So Gary curates uh, the E4 training website. Uh, and Tim has worked with Gary, along with some advisement from the center, um, to kind of pick and choose um, some of the key features in Gary's online resource um, that was very pertinent to the needs of the Pennsylvania power, uh, ag power and equipment industry that would also support the needs of apprentices moving through the apprenticeship program. Um, and along with that, that our school-based ag ed programs could utilize to support apprentices that um, are enrolled in those programs uh, or just help you know, prepare and develop competencies and skills uh, and knowledge in the workforce that you're all training in your programs. So with that, um, I'm finally gonna let Gary take it away. Gary's gonna demonstrate. Um, he's not gonna be able to touch on everything that's gonna be available through this resource, but he's gonna do a, a very nice job of over, overviewing what he has pulled and, and, and what his uh, resource holds as well as Gary has developed lesson plans that uh, go along with all of these modules in the learning resource. So Gary, take it away. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, John. Uh, I'll just try and share my screen so that people um, don't have to look at me. Uh, didn't like that. Host disabled participant screen sharing is, um, could uh, I, be like to share my screen, Bethany? Uh, yep, hold on one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go. There we go, screen share. Hopefully, are we uh, seeing my screen now with online hydraulic training? Good, okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, as um, thanks for the introduction, John. Uh, I run efortraining.com, which is a hydraulic training website. I've worked for Parker, Rexroth, Sour, Sunstrand and others for 30 years. So I'm a hydraulics engineer. Uh, and what I want to show you today is how you can present high quality hydraulic lessons without being a hydraulics expert. Uh, and we do that primarily by giving you virtual hydraulic test rigs. So if you, you students need to learn by doing things, uh, test rigs are expensive and dangerous. So we give lots of e-learning systems where you can adjust things and run things and just run through little exercises on the simulation. So basically this is what the site is about, is giving virtual equipment test rigs for you to operate and teach your students with. And also below each one there are a series of lessons and examples and helping you to do various things. Because um, well, just to show you, just to start off by throwing everything, these are the number of simulations we've actually got. There are lots and lots of different valves. And the big issue with e-learning is people finding out and finding what they need, the information they need. So we've worked with uh, Tim Wentz to produce uh, some lesson plans to try and make this easy for you. So we've got a whole series of lesson plans um, written with, again, a little bit of research from the guys over there to see what is used in school. So we give you your objectives. Uh, this is a demo one that we'll pass to you afterwards so that you can actually work through and have a look at the site and try it all yourself. So this is just trying to show you the scope uh, and typically what's included. So we, we give objectives. We explain the previous knowledge and the materials you require, uh, the terminologies that you'll be learning. And then we give little exercises for early birds and we guide you through a lesson. So we show you where the resources are and explain what you should, points you should be getting across to the students. Um, just one thing from people that have been training for a long time, they all say start with a symbol. Symbols make a good start for a, for a lesson. And then we take you through the various tutorials we've got show you where the resources are and the things you should be looking for. Um, so that's really what I'm gonna go through today. 
I'm just going to take you through some of the resources so that you appreciate um, what's available. To um, the tricky bit with a teacher and the, the good thing you do is you know your students so you know what to deliver to them and with hydraulic training particularly there's just so many different levels it can be difficult and we split ours into six different levels if you get chance look at the CTOP training that's very good they just have three different levels so our level one is a rookie someone who's just starting uh, level two would be perhaps someone who's purchasing equipment and really just needs to know what it is the names and a bit about what they're buying most for the the end users here we we need people to come in or explain to me we need people to come into the mobile industry to become maintenance technicians this is where the majority of the work is and there are three different levels within this so the first one would be just to operate equipment and to be able to read gauges so hydraulics can be dangerous hydraulics is fun by the way it's we get the biggest machines the most power you know all the great robots and things the really powerful things are in hydraulics so it's a, it's a good industry um, and first stage is just to be able to operate it safely the second stage is really to be able to adjust the settings um, set equipment up you need then to know to be able to look inside the components and understand how they are constructed so there's a lot of that on the site so that you know what you're actually doing when you adjust things. And the final stage is the highest level of maintenance, really commissioning, maintaining equipment. Um, you need to know the implications if you change something, modify it slightly to know what it's doing. You need to know the settings and the specification of the equipment. So that's the highest level. So we try and keep this clear within our training. and We try to guide you through. Uh, I'm still building this table, but we have given you a series of courses. So there are a series module lessons that take you up from people from beginners through to generating an interest and um, really at this stage we know uh, it's going to be a lot of students so we are showing you and trying to set, extend them and keep their interest in hydraulics without perhaps taking them to this level in the in the time that you've got I guess but um, anyway we, we try and make it easier for you to find the appropriate lessons so just to guide you through some of the things we've got there are lots of menus in the system finding and navigating through a an e-learning site is tricky so we do lots of menus find the menu the approach you you like we start off with a very basic uh, work through the fundamentals working safety safety is obviously critical in industry um, then we work through the fundamentals and basic principles um, and come through right the way up through all the components, different components onto the systems and cylinders. There's, there's a lot there, but we try to keep it fairly clear. I'll just show you this one because I once had a fantastic lesson from, uh, from someone, integrated hydraulics, and they said basically hydraulics is easy. All you have is a piston, so you have your uh, cylinder or a spool piston, you apply pressure to one end of it and it moves. You've got a spring at the other end. So you have pressures and spring forces and then you have a small orifice. And as you move it, you open and close the orifice, which controls the flows and pressure drops. And to be honest, that's everything in hydraulics. Uh, we have leakage. We have friction from, we put O-rings in so things slow down and don't move so quickly. And we have restrictions in volumes that control the timing and um, we just use that over and over again so it's a nice it's it's a nice industry to be in because it's not too complicated at that level so coming back to our um, our menus uh, a lot of it unfortunately is all going to be knowledge you still need the knowledge Base learning you have to have the text and pictures and deliver it but um, we give lots of hopefully lots of instruction uh, and you gradually work through so start off at the very easiest what is a relief valve and we work through how does it work and the different types so we do try and keep it fairly consistent all the way through that we start off with the simpler modules and then build up through it as you come on to the more advanced sections, 
and the design features and characteristics and, and settings. So as you gradually work through it, you can stop at the level you think you need to. There are lots of videos. So we have a video on every subject if you want to watch that. And appreciate that there are um, lots of students that want to learn a little bit more. Not everyone works at the same speed. So um, there are a lot of resources that you can let your students work on independently or give them little projects to do. Uh, we've got another simulation here, which is just a relief valve. So as you can see, you can actually operate it. You can change the uh, return line pressures uh, because it only really works the pressure difference across it. And you can adjust the settings exactly as you could do in practice, but obviously in safety. Uh, and you can give your students different exercises. So I'm actually rushing through. Uh, another thing we've got are some tutorials. So um, contamination is pretty vital. So these are little self-study routines where um, students can come on and just uh, click through, step through a presentation. And um, then there's little questions at the end. They get little questions to confirm that they've actually done it and understood what's, um, what's required. So this brings us on, we're looking at uh, mobile equipment. And this brings us on to the um, routine that we developed in association with, uh, with NIDA. So this is typically how you'd uh, maintain and operate a skid steer excavator. So what we did was first of all, just to show people what it does. So you've got a little bit of fun. You just want to engage the students, keep their interest up so they can drive it and then try and drive it through the boxes without hitting too many, which uh, clearly I'm not very good at. Um, so it just introduces students to what hydraulics is and what it does. Uh, but it then takes you through the various systems. Now, this is uh, it's quite complicated. It's not a five minute job. You look at this and you understand it all. You can spend five, you can spend a lesson on each one of these different sections. So there is a lot of things here. And that's the reason for the lesson plans that we give you clear instructions on what you should be looking for. Um, you will need to go and just practice yourself beforehand to understand what it is. But then, you know, you can operate these systems and you can see how they work. So on the dry system, we've got our same control here, we can see our electrical signal. We're, we're driving an electrical signal. Uh, and that signal operates our hydraulic valve, control valve. And that control valve puts pressure on a swash plate. Um, so if you've done your pump training in section as well, you've got the swash plate drives the pump forward or backwards, depending on the control signal it's given. And we have a closed circuit here, hydrostatic system. So we're driving through from one side to move the motor in one direction and the other way it moves it in the other direction. And it's closed circuit, which is a typical hydrostatic transmission. Our auxiliaries are in open circuit, load sensing. So very quickly, we've got another piston pump here. We've got another control signal. and. Uh, there are little subtleties that will come up. The, the slew is on or off. There's no proportional control on this. It's either full speed on or full speed off. The arm extend can be moved gradually. So if you look at the control signals, so there are a lot of, a lot of little subtleties in this that will um, need to be explained to the students within a lesson. But as I say, we've, we've written down for you to explain. But here we've got a system where we're driving our signal is operating our pump through this controller and that pump is just uh, passing flow the same in the same direction through the same pipes to drive the slew in one direction and then the control valve here separates it to drive it in the other direction and we're sensing back our signals back onto our control valve here to say and this says a load sensing system I've got load I need some more power so Hopefully we've explained that nice and clearly in the instructions, but it allows you to uh, demonstrate it to the students and hopefully they can then go and demonstrate it and experiment 
with it themselves, this and, and other routines to actually um, fully understand it. We also, there are lots of different stages to this. So um, we've got various items. It shows us, uh, if you switch through it, it will tell us flow pass and high pressure drops. Let's come back to something a bit more simple. Flow losses within the system. So there are various instructions uh, and then you have to, there's a little exercises the students need to do to identify them. Uh, and they do get scores once they get it right. So there are a number of exercises that again, showing you very quickly is just gonna be com confusing. But hopefully if you, uh, if you present it within a classroom and give people time to, to run through it all, then um, there are lots of exercises in here for different levels. You keep going up, it gets gradually more and more complicated. Our next um, section, we look at the hydrostatic drive in more detail. So again, we've got little routines here with mouse over so uh, students can investigate it themselves to see what the major components are. Um, they can click on and drag to find out which is a pressure control valve and again a little score or which isn't a pressure control valve. Um, so there are little exercises they can do. Uh, flow control devices, uh, there are circuit building exercises, so it just, by making people do things, it reinforces uh, their learning. Obviously, you just look at it and you think you know it, but as soon as you have to actually do something yourself, it becomes a different, uh, different kettle of fish, I'm sure you know. Um, but one of the nice things about this one, as you get more advanced, um, there are little exercises where you ask people to actually maintain the system. Um, there are instructions at the top, you have to do various things. In this case, uh, the maintenance would be to look at the filter clogging indicator. So again, they do the prepar preparatory work and in the instructional exercises that show them what they should do, but this actually checks whether they've remembered it or learned it. So you're given all the instrumentation and you have to investigate to, uh, in that case, just to do basic maintenance, what will your ma basic maintenance be? Uh, but we've got commissioning and we've got diagnostics. So there are a couple of exercises. We like to do little investigative exercises where they have to find out what is actually wrong with the system. So you can run your, um, you would look at the system to see if you can see anything wrong. You would test, temperatures to see if you can find out what the temperatures are and look for anything unusual um, and then when you think you know what's wrong you click on it and uh, I guess right it's norm normally down to the filter and clogging indicators but um, yeah so it's a little exercise you get scores the nice things about this hopefully um, you're getting learning management systems and LRS systems so once you've done the exercises, uh, the students can add their LRS details or LMS details uh, and just post the results. And that collects the, uh, I'm not sure if that one's gone. So then you would look at your LRS. This is, um, there are free ones out there uh, and I'm sure you've got school ones if you're linked with schools. Um, so this now, gives you the results of whatever activity you did. So you can scan your whole class and see what they've been up to and how much they've done, uh, which is quite a nice, nice way of tracking the results. So that essentially, let me do time, is the system that is mobile related. So you can spend whole, whole lessons on that. And again, we've, we've given various guides. Another area that's, um, comes up a lot in hydraulic training is buying um, simulation programs and there's fluid sim and a few other simulation packages that cost a lot of money and aren't generally used in industry to be quite honest. I'm not convinced they're great uses for training because they're, they're too complicated. I love them but, um, and I use them a lot when I'm working but um, they have their issues. So hydraulics, I like to think of as a bit more like chess than design. You don't create new things. Everything's been done before and it's important you know 
what you can do and which is the most appropriate circuit or approach to solve a problem. As you would in chess, there's five different uh, moves you can make, but it's thinking five moves down and what you should do to be in the right position, should you be attacking or defensive. Uh, in hydraulics, you know, should you be worried about cost, contamination, or whatever. So you'll have lots of different approaches to something. Um, and it's knowing the implications of the choices you make on which approach you take. So this section now is for power supply systems, which is quite interesting because the Americans tend to use different ones to the to UK and Europe. So, you know, that is a reason for using it. It's standards within a country. But on this one, we've got an open center system. Don't use them in the, in the UK very much at all, but common in the US. And what you can do is if you look at the circuit, we've got a simple simulation program. So it's not as complicated as it is fluid sim or the other ones, but that means you can make less mistakes. It's far too easy to make a mistake putting in the wrong values on a simulation program. But now you can actually test the systems. So you can operate it and you can put the test gauge on the valves and it will show you pressures and various things that are happening. Uh, with this one, we can't operate the second cylinder because it's an open center and we need to put that cylinder back in. So you can only operate one system at the time. So again, you can do exercises within the class uh, and ask them to do things and then they can experiment and see what happens on the, uh, with the results. So we can, we've got a number of different circuits and again, we build in faults so their diagnostics um, programs. And this essentially is how simulation programs would be used in that you don't put the whole machine in because then the maths just goes crazy and it runs too slow, but you test individual cylinder and valve circuits. So on a big machine, there might be 20 different cylinders, but you would look at each one individually and probably you'd be looking at the loads. On here, we've, um, you've got different masses and forces and frictions. And to be honest, a lot of the time, it's the load that creates the issue. You, your circuit is de designed around what load you've got. So by changing the loads on here, you can see the differences and when you'd need a PO check valve and when you wouldn't. And some of the things that happen if, we, if you put too much load on, you get a, an instability which is um, what we've got there coming in that one. So we can build in different issues into these circuits and that should come down, but it's not coming down. You've got to, got to love hydraulics. <laughs> oh, that's the one, the diagnostics one. So there are, there are lots of different circuits here. We can load the supply circuits. You can add in accumulators and do various things. So within a class, what you need is to give the students a challenge to go away and solve something and look at something and they can experiment with these, the different circuits to find things out. Um, what are we doing on time? We are pushing on. So one of the, um, the other things that we were asked for is to have apps on Chromebooks and uh, mobile phones. So a lot of these systems will also run on um, mobile equipment there's a new, uh, we've got some apps and we've got a link to download only at Android at the moment. Um, but you can do the, the skid steer loader app is also available on a mobile phone so that the students can actually take it home or play it in the classroom and experiment with it. So there's quite a lot of different apps available. Um, and actually I've rushed through a little bit. So I don't know if there are um, questions or things we'd like to see again. I don't know, John, if, you, uh, if you're getting feedback, it's quite, it's quite difficult without feedback to know, uh, know where we are and what we should do. But if there's some areas I should uh, run over again or people would like to see, then perhaps, um, perhaps we can do that. Yeah, Gary, uh, unfortunately, my time was mostly spent um, trying to work with, with our university IT services to try to get this problem resolved. Um, but I have not seen or uh, heard of any uh, questions or input um, using either the Q&A feature or the chat feature. 
Um, but please, folks, this is a very, and this is very discouraging that we've encountered such uh, technological trouble here with this. This is a, a resource um, that a lot of uh, time, a lot of collaboration um, has gone into specifically for you folks to use. So if there is any questions uh, that you specifically have for Gary, um, another feature that he skimmed over that you'd like to, him to show a little bit more detail uh, on, uh, please, please, please um, speak up and, and now's your time uh, to really get a, a good idea as to what it all is included um, in this opportunity. So you should have the uh, option of unmuting yourself to pose a question, um, or again, you can type the question into the chat box or the Q&A feature. So John, as we kind of enter this workshop here today, Gary, by the way, nice job. Um, is this open? to us at a cost, at a reduced cost, no cost? Um, how do we make it usable for us? Um, how do we access the material? Lots of questions there, I guess. Are you, you going to take that, John? Because um, there is a charge from our end, but there are things in place with uh, Tim Wentz is, is probably the guy to answer that, isn't he? Because Right, right. Um, so I was, I was responding to the same question that Marty uh, posed in the chat feature, uh, but I guess something else I, shouldn't, I should have mentioned, and I was hoping that Tim would have been here to do so, is in addition to uh, paying Gary for his services and usage of, of the resource, um, Tim, i.e. Northeast Equipment Dealers Association, uh, has purchased uh, a block of user codes. Oh. Um, so I'm, I don't, and Tim, Tim and Gary worked out the, uh, the agreement uh, as far as how long those codes are good for. Um, and we can continue the conversation with the commission, et cetera, um, as far as uh, revisiting and keeping those codes active. Um, but this, this is all currently available to you uh, free of charge, courtesy, again, of Northeast Equipment Dealers Association. Uh, so I have those codes, um, and, and, but so feel free to reach out to me um, if interested, um, as well as Tim, and again, which again, I was hoping Tim would be on the call here uh, to cover this portion. Um, but in the meantime, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you'd like to utilize this, this service. So John, you, when we contact you, we're just going to be able to get <clears throat> the codes, but also uh, the website or whatever it is that we have to go to get to to get to these apps. Is that correct? You have everything we need. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We, can okay. we? Um, yeah. Can we direct that through Tim? Because actually, the codes we've released have mostly been for uh, people working on the projects. So we probably would issue a batch of codes for teachers and various groups. So I probably need to talk to, to Tim a little bit more to say, well, these are the best codes. Then we can monitor it a little more and control okay. it a little better. So um, yeah, we just need to sort that out, but there will be a batch of codes. Uh, so you'll get a code and also some instructions on where the teaching resources are because they're not readily available on the website there and hidden pages so that only teachers and not the students. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. That sort of um, thing. There will be a batch of information that we'll organize with Tim. Okay. Well, to John and Gary, um, this would be something that at Central Columbia we'd be obviously interested in. My only hang up, there's something to think about, is I won't address this issue or topic and probably till about February. So, is there a way for Tim and Gary to work together? to have, I want to say, codes available later in the year. Even if we are face-to-face -face later in the year, because um, right now we're targeted to go face-to-face -face August 27th, but I don't know if that's going to occur. But we don't hit hydraulics in Ag 4 until February. So that's some, maybe something, and somebody else might be in that same situation, maybe not. 
I'm just, I'm just asking the question for us. Is that something that we could work around to have a few codes available second semester or later in the year, that type of thing? Yeah, the codes will last for a year. Um, we're okay. not quite certain when people um, need it. From our point of view, it'd be nice to issue them once a year and control it well, but you know, things don't work that nicely. So, but we'll have, we'll have codes available for a year that you can use um, during that period. Is the okay. way the code. And we just need to check that they don't get out of hand and too many people are using it and getting passed around. So we obviously uh, need to control things a little bit, but generally it's uh, generally there's not people racing to learn about hydraulics and that's not the huge issue. <laughs> so. Yeah, Doug, Gary's exactly right. Um, the, the, the ultimate, like I said, this is a, a multi uh, faceted endeavor here and Scott Sheely was also supposed to be on uh, as representative of the commission. Um, the, the, there's a lot of people that understand this, uh, that this is a necessary resource and that oh, doing great. more in the hydraulics training space in our ag programs uh, is something that, of, of, of utmost importance for um, at least the power equipment industry that's in dire need of, of a, a trained workforce right now. So the, the ultimate goal long range and uh, by long range i mean at least for the next one to three years is to have this resource available uh free of charge for educators to use with students for apprentices going through the apprenticeship program to use um so you know right now northeast equipment dealers association is the one really footing the bill on things but i know that there's interest from the commission to support this um you know the senders here so between all of these different entities, we would like this to be readily available for the foreseeable future free of charge. Um, it's just a matter of who is going to be uh, sponsoring that, uh, you know, those codes. Right, so, right. Like I said, we, we usually hit this in our older group ag four, uh, usually seniors. Um, they've been through physics or working their way through physics. They've had some chemistry. Um, we know in the ag mech CIP code, uh, knock the exam that hydraulics plays a role there. Not so much in the uh, practical exam, but in the written exam, many questions occur um, in, uh, in and on hydraulics. So we make sure we touch base on those. And I did was able to live through uh, in the springtime trying to instruct hydraulics remotely, never doing that before with the resources that I had. So what drove me to today's workshop for Gary and John is what's a way to bolster that hydraulic remote e-learning if we have to do that again. Or even, or even if we are face-to-face, -face, these are things that we could use in the classroom face-to-face -face as well. Yeah, I mean, it's been designed to work in both. I mean, it was designed pre-COVID, but there's a lot more e-learning e now and a lot more requirement for it. Um, one thing I would say, we've put in the, the end of the lesson plans, you have the ticket out three, two, one activity over there, one well, in the UK as well. Uh, so it would be nice to get some feedback because really this was designed for companies, hydraulics companies to train their staff and workforce, particularly around the maintenance side of things. But um, the school is a little bit different to us. There's been a lot of interest from um, college, schools and colleges recently. It's a little bit different. Um, so we've worked with teachers to develop the lesson plan, but if there are things that work or don't work, then that feedback would be good for the three, two, one activity to come back to us through okay. Tim. And we'll build that in next year, hopefully, and, and improve again next year if we can. So. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Gary, on the point you talked about hydrox being pretty simple. Um, that's probably the most, mm -hmm questions I get when we first start is, what's well, pretty complicated? And we talk about hydraulics and pneumatics at the same time. So we're talking fluid power versus air power. Um, once the kids have gone through it, they realize it's a pretty simple process. Um, they just got to understand how it works and why it works. And that's really where Nocti is coming from as well. In their exam, most of those questions are pretty basic questions in that exam. Um, for ag mechanization certification. But um, again, if we never touched on hydraulics, you'd never have any clue. So 
yeah, I'm glad you said that up front. Yeah, and these days it's the danger. I mean, there's a lot to know about hydraulics. The basic principles are fine. You can learn those, but with the control of contamination, obviously important, but the safety is now is becoming a major issue. So there's a lot of work with the, certainly with CTOP. We don't particularly touch on this because we're not signing people off to be safe, but companies have to ensure that their workers are safe to work at those three different levels and control that a lot better now. So, you know, teaching to students and stuff is fine, but once you start teaching and getting people out into industry, I mean, I think the Tim's original spec was the one thing was to engage students and, and make them realize how much fun hydraulics is to bring them into the industry, but also they are training people within who are already working in the industry. And then we need to make sure they're safe to work being one of the, the key issues these days. Okay. Shall I unshare my screen now? <laughs> Do you, uh... Yes. Is there any, uh, any other questions for Gary or before he pulls his screen down? Um, anything that you'd like to see again, didn't quite understand uh, when he was going through it. Um, again, we were scheduled to do this uh, for an hour here and we're, we're well under that. And we unfortunately got started a little bit late um, due to these technological issues. Um, yeah, but ask away. And if not, we don't need a hostage situation um, as Dr. Foster likes to say. Um, but now's the time to ask folks. So, so Gary, through the process, the kids are going to be able to understand the basics of the hydraulic system. That's what you're showing there, right? They're going to be able to, to understand the safety part of the hydraulics. I'm just trying to think on my task list in ag mechanization, all the pieces that go with it. They're going to be actually physically able to drive a skid steer, which is kind of cool because I'll let you know this, that working with John last year, no, two years ago now, over at, or was it last year, John, when we talked with Tim Wentz and he came in and did the workshop. EAAE Summer Conference last year, yep. Yeah, last year. When we worked with Tim on that, we came back to our local dealers here, actually a Kubota dealer here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, eastern part of the United States, and we got hooked up with our local dealer, and they were able to provide us um, a skid steer use for our tractor driving uh, safety course, as well as our hydraulic course in Ag 4, free of charge. So, so what you guys are doing for us, working with our local dealers, does come into full circle. Um, if the instructor wants to reach out there and actually try to obtain some of those resources. So don't think that the work that you guys have done goes unappreciated from our side because it's all up to the instructor to reach out to their local dealers to say hey what can you do for us it was just a shot in the dark on my part i was anticipating no there's no way we're going to be able to do that and after a couple of weeks of work back and forth we now have access to a skid steer which we own our own school track our, our ag department owns our own tractor so that wasn't an issue and has all the hydraulic ports and all that factor go with it but we want to add a skid steer factor to it because when we go to the regional uh, competition here in the United States at the Big E in Springfield, Massachusetts, the skid steer part of tractor driving career development event in FFA is a part of that. And if you don't practice that, the kids will have no clue what's going on. So that's why we wanted to add the skid steer part. So in the models here and in the modules, they're going to be actually able to drive a skid steer on screen. Is that correct? Yes, they can drive and they can do a lot on screen. I mean, hands-on experience is good. A lot of our training works because we do it with people from industry who are actually working on hydraulic equipment all the time. So they've got the hands-on knowledge uh, and they just need the technical side of things. So, but certainly if you're just working with students, it's, it's good to get access to equipment and you know, get old valves, talk to your local dealers and they'll supply you with old valves that they've taken off that are broken. So the students can look inside. There's lots of things. I mean, if people are happy, I can just keep on talking. Oh, we're nearly there now, but I can keep on talking. This is the contents list of all the subjects that are in the lesson plans that we've released so far. Um, so we've got 
from an introduction to hydraulics, so the very basic level of what hydraulics does and how you compare pneumatics, electrical and uh, hydraulic drives. Um, you know, we go through the theories uh, and the flow and power of fundamentals. So, you know, the, the main, there are a lot of calculations if you want it generally, um, unless you're designing, you don't use the calculations, but there are a lot of, it's good, particularly for students to uh, understand and practice the formulas and calculations. Uh, we do a lot on the symbols. So I say the symbols are always a good place to start. Um, and then we run through valves, normal directional valves, pressure and flow control valves, uh, hydraulic pumps and motors. Uh, we look at loads in some detail because really you have to un understand your loads. That's the most complicated part of the system most of the time. Um, we look through skid steer, obviously, in this course, we look through the skid steer a lot. There are other courses that cover um, uh, lifting. Lifting is one of the major dangers, so we've got just a little uh, scissor lift exercises and industrial power units, um, because obviously, depending on where you are, you might have more industrial customers or clients nearby. Um, so we do a lot of the, the power units and contaminations and instrumentation uh, settings and maintenance procedures. So we skim across them, don't go into too much detail in this course because it's, it's focused on students. But the plan is to, to do some more courses that are um, uh, have more detail for the maintenance side of things. In, uh, unit, in unit 14 and units in lesson 14 and lesson 16, is that where you're touching on the different types of uh, hydraulic fluids, viscosities, grading types, is that where those two would be found at? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not so sure. And uh, certainly in Europe, we're going very um, biodegradable fluids and uh, fire safety has been a huge issue in recent things. So there are lots of different fluids um, and I'm sure, and the fluid is pretty much the most complicated part of the system. Uh, so we don't go into it in too much detail, but um, certainly make people aware of how critical maintaining the fluid is. Um, yep. for the life of the system. Uh, contamination, as I keep saying, is, is you know, 80% of failures. When I started, it was overnight. Everyone said 90% of failures were contamination. Now they say it's 80% because we control it so much better. But contamination really is the one for reliability. So we try and explain where it comes from, how it gets in, how you should maintain it, and what you should be doing. So uh, there's, there's quite a lot on contamination. Um, there's, yeah, you know, it's, we try and cover everything in good detail without snowing people. It's not, uh, originally when I started it, I was looking at design because I worked in design all my life, but really there aren't many people at that level working in design and everything is so specific with different companies and different equipment. Um, it's, it's moved towards maintenance because that's where, particularly mobile equipment maintenance, because that's where the, the jobs are, that's where the work is. Um, yeah, just yeah. So just so you know, and, and maybe John would know, maybe not know or know as well. But in our in this national NOCTE test that we take for certification, um, the again nothing practical goes on in AgMEC, but in the written part of the exam, they talk a little bit about fluids. They talk a little bit, basically the hydraulic part. Not many questions. There may be of 183 questions. There might be six questions on hydraulics, but um, six to eight question on hydraulics, but it's really talking about flow of electron. How do you control the flow? How do you control the pressure? Um, and how do you adjust pressures in the system? And then if a contamination did occur, how do you fix it? Basically, that's the questions that occur in the NOCTE on, on hydraulics. So, so they, those would be the lessons that we would be interested in, but we'd be interested in all of them. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a great thing you guys have done here, so. Yeah, well, ho hopefully it's helpful. And I say, if you if you use it and you like certain parts, let us know, and we'll um, we, you know, we'll we'll try and develop it to the ways it works for yourselves. So again, when we had obtained the codes, um, all of these lessons are available to us, not just portions of them. Yeah, as I said earlier, there's so much on the site that it can get confusing. So we've tried to write the lesson plans to say this is all you need to do just run through this lesson plan. Okay. 
but so it's going to change. I mean, some people know quite a lot about hydraulics and might like to pick off certain things to focus in certain areas. Others might just stay with the lesson plans exactly. Um, it depends, you know, depends on put someone's skills, their own skills and their students, what their stu students are going to do. And um, sure. again, if you've got certain equipment, you know, for like your skid steer, you had to actually do some maintenance on, you might want to tailor it a little bit that way. But there, there should be enough information on there to um, allow you to, to select other things. But we, you know, that you need to know what you're doing to do that. Otherwise, you get, can get confusing. Okay. Yeah, um, and as we are crossing the 11 o'clock hour here, um, that sounds like a good uh, ending point. So I just once again like to reiterate that um, while Gary just mentioned his site contains a whole lot of different stuff uh, in it, um, Tim and Scott uh, brought forth the competencies um, that they have included in the uh, Ag Equipment Technician Apprenticeship, um, sort of crosswalked it to what Gary had and made sure that um, Gary had something in this sort of digital package um, that addressed all of the competencies required in the apprenticeship program. And again, that apprenticeship program is linked back directly to what industry said this is what we need folks coming to us uh, to fill jobs. This is what we need them to know. This is what we need them to be able to do. Um, this is what we need them to be able to understand. So it's what Gary, what the codes give you access to. Uh, I, I don't want to downplay what anybody is doing in their program already, but I am 100% confident uh, this will enable our, our Pennsylvania Ag programs to really elevate and do a comprehensive job of addressing, teaching, and having students learn hydraulics, and especially the, uh, the specific competencies and knowledge that industry says it needs its students coming out of our programs to know. Um, so with that code, you will get a lot, and you will get more than probably you ever need but you will have access to a lot. And again, the, the hope and intent is that I, I'd like to pay tribute to Tim and Northeast Equipment Dealers Association once again. They have spearheaded this whole process. Uh, the center has only been there in an advisement capacity um, to kind of say, yeah, this is what teachers need. This is how, how they're gonna probably use it. Um, and we, we and, and, and Janae McMichael, uh, Lampeter Strasburg also, has played a critical role. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Some of you probably uh, took part in a survey that Janae released. Um, the information provided in that, that you all provided in that survey was taken back directly to Gary as far as how he can package and present the lesson plans in the most effective format for you, for you to use. So with the code that Northeast Equipment Dealers Association is paying for, um, you will have access to everything that industry says you need and everything that you said you would like or the format that you would like it in. So thank you to everybody. Uh, even though most of them are not here, uh, except for Gary, thank you to everybody that has contributed to this process. And special thank you to Gary for uh, pulling this amazing resource together for us. On behalf of Pennsylvania, we thank you. Um, and I really feel bad for all the folks that intended to be here and wanted to be here today and we're unable to. Uh, that's a real shame. So thanks Gary for spending an hour of your time with us today. Um, I'm sure this will not be the last time you hear or see uh, some of us on the call um, and the conversation will continue.